Okay, great. Okay, so welcome everyone. So we're having a new moon women's circle for the month of Cheshvan, the month of Scorpio, and um, also a gathering here. You know, we're right here. I think, am I the only one on here from Israel right now? I think so. We are. No, oh, fun and yeah. Yay, thank you. I'm happy you made it on. Great. So it's your friend from Tzvah. Also, I see Shimonid is on. Oh, and Shimonid. Hi, welcome, Shimonid. Great. Um, yeah. So everyone knows, I mean, everyone, I feel like our heart, you know, it says, Libi ba Mizrach, you know, our heart is always to the West, to, the, to Yerushalayim, to the East. Um, our heart is always to Israel, always to Jerusalem. We're always so connected to the land of Israel as the Jewish people and as, as, an, as a collective. But now more than ever, we are so, the whole world is just so connected here. And I think it's so powerful to really share our teachings specifically straight here from the Holy Land. You know, when, when this started, people were messaging me, um, why don't you go on, Miriam, and do a circle, just like you do with your daughter? Some of you may have remembered. Um, my daughter, a number of years ago, it's about two and a half years ago, was very badly burned. And it was a very serious situation. Um, and it happened to be I had a, a woman's circle planned already. And I remember I came on and it was right after I found out that news that she had had, she was on a respirator and I came on and I was really like in this, thank God, I just had like a gift from above where I was like, joy breaks all barriers. It was the month of Adar, which is the month of joy. And I was putting on social media, everyone let's dance and the merit of her, of her speedy recovery. And it was just so powerful. It really was so powerful. And people said to me, come on, like do something again. You got to do something. And I'll just be very vulnerable and very honest about my experience. When this started, um, I was really in freeze mode. I couldn't even speak. My body was like so stiff. I, I felt literally like disconnected my, my mind to my heart. Like I just, I, I couldn't even put words together. And it really took me like a good week, you know, to really be able to like come on here and share. And I think there's so, I was thinking about it. like. Why is it, you know, that like I responded that way and then and this way now? I think there's so many factors to it. First of all, I feel like sometimes we get a gift from above. It's called like it's a rusa de la ila, just a gift from above where we're able to like handle things and and we have to use those strengths and what we learned from those times in other times of crisis as well. You know, in addition, I think that we all evolve and we're all changing and we're all growing as people. And I don't feel that my response now is necessarily like, oh, I, I went back, I reversed back. I really feel like it was a more, in a way, mature, developed um, approach and experience of what I experience right now, honestly. And at the same time, also, you know, that experience was like my trauma. It was my pain, Right now, the collective pain is so great. You know, all of us are brothers and sisters. Like every cell of each other, there's this interconnection and unity within each other. And the pain that we're feeling is so heavy and so great. And there's so much mourning um, and so much deep loss that it just, I think everyone's trauma response is different. You know, some people are in the fight, flight, freeze mode. You know, some people are getting on there and right away we're able to just like, come on, spread the light. And, you know, and everyone's response is different. And I think we really have to be present to ourselves, to our experience and how we cope with, um, with trauma and with challenges. And when I was really thinking, what do I really want to share? Like, what has been my journey this past week? And I think my biggest journey, and I think it's something that's, not, has not been spoken about enough is the idea of holding paradoxes, holding duality. Because we are holding right now one of the most massive paradoxes that we ever had as a humanity. On one way, right, we know enod malvado, there's nothing but Hashem. And this is an opportunity to go so, so, so deep, like never before in those resources of bitachon and faith and trust, and really know that the truth is that Hashem is fighting this battle. And this is a spiritual, that there's a physical war going on, but at the same time, there's a spiritual war going on. And the spiritual war is a war of our mind and our hearts. 
And it's an opportunity, again, to go so, so deep within ourselves of these resources of faith and resilience and trust. That's on one hand. But at the same time, the feelings are so real. It's so intense. There's fear. There's so much deep sadness and pain and anger. And, and I feel like this week, I felt like every range of emotion possible. And I think what we really, the, the real deep growth, I think for myself, and I think what we really are all coming into is holding that paradox. And when we actually hold that paradox where there's, there's two, a, a, what could seem almost opposing, you know, two realities that are existing simultaneously of like, yes, this is all Hashem and is an opportunity to go so deep and to grow and to expand ourselves and, and really expand our divine consciousness. And at the same time, we are so sad. The pain is so great. And when we do that, we really expand our vessel. We expand ourselves to be able to receive even more and more and more light. And there's so much light coming into the world now because we are at the footsteps of Mashiach. We've been saying this for so long, but this is like, we are so, 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 so close. And that's why this is happening. You know, it says that and many people are saying this is the war of Gogu Magog and that Gogu Magog, there's different stages and we're at the final stage. So again, I don't, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a Kabbalist. I don't know exactly, but we know for sure, this is it. We are at the final footsteps. Now, Owens, what, ha what I always find so fascinating is I came up with this topic and I said, okay, it's also, I want to do this on Rosh Chodesh, on the new moon. This is a time of tremendous um, energy for women, especially. And I was thinking, wow, I want to, I think it's important to also bring in some teachings from the new month. And when I started learning a little bit more about the month of Cheshvan, I actually saw, wow, my, the topic that I chose of holding paradox and holding contradictions and bringing unity to ourselves is actually so interconnected into the energy of the month of Cheshvan as we're going to see. So again, I, I really pivoted last minute. And why is it that I do feel, at first I was just going to make this more of like a circle of connecting and, you know, learning together and praying, but I really feel it's important that we actually really get into some learning here and specifically learning the deeper the dimensions of the Torah. And why is that? Because it says in the Zohar that with the book of, of the Zohar, with the book meaning of the mystical dimensions of the Torah, we are going to be redeemed with God's love and with God's mercy. The chesed uvarachamim. So it's so important right now as we're fighting this spiritual battle, each and every one of us, that we really up our learning specifically of the mystical dimensions of the Torah, because this is our armor. This is what is going to help us and fight the battle as it says, as promised by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that with this book, we will be redeemed. So I think it's so important that we do go into tonight some really deep teachings. And as well, I want to, as, as we're going to see towards the end, we're really going to bring this more into um, some exercises, some meditations to really integrate this into our, into our minds and into our hearts. Now, the other reason why I think it's so important to actually discuss the energies of the month that we're in is because this is the spiritual energy that's really available for us. There is a, when, when the new month comes in, there's a spiritual download of a collective consciousness that's available for us. And when we actually learn about it, as we're going to see, it really gives us the strength and it empowers us with how do we proceed? Like we're all walking around and we're just, whoa, like what do we do? What what do we, how do we actually unleash these, these deep reservoirs of bitachon and trust? And as we're gonna see, we have these spiritual downloads of energy within the month itself that's gonna really help us and guide us. It's really a guide for us in how to navigate ourselves emotionally during this time. So the month of Cheshvan is called Mar Cheshvan. It's called bitter. Mar literally means bitter. Bitter month of Cheshvan. Now, why is that? It's because there's no holidays in the month, right? And that, especially now, like I was thinking about it, wow, like when Shabbat came in, I was like, oh, thank God we have Shabbat. Like, 
Um, you know, and I was thinking we're we're in a time right now that we're we're we don't have for a whole month we don't have holidays, and that could feel like like it's hard, you know, especially coming from the month of Tishrei. But what does it say? It says that specifically Cheshvan, the month of Cheshvan, follows the month of Tishrei. And what does Tishrei mean? Tishrei means comes from the word Shruya, which literally means saturated. That Tishrei is a month that's saturated in the high holidays. We have Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Simchat Torah. The whole month is saturated with holidays. Now, if you kind of think of it, like I'm thinking of a visualization, let's say you have a towel, right? And you dunk this towel in a bucket of water. The towel is now saturated. What's going to happen when you take that towel out? All of that water is just going to spill out, right? It's going to spill over. And that really is what the month of Tishrei is. It doesn't have holidays within it, yes. But at the same time, it says, according to the mystical teachings, that the month of Tishrei saturates the month of Cheshvan with this high energy, the energy of the holidays. And I felt for me, I was like, oh, wow, that was such a comforting teaching for me because like, you know, especially now with what we're going through. Now, and we see this even more so in, if we start looking a little bit deeper into the Zodiac of the month, that there's a very deep interconnection between the month of Tishrei, Cheshvan, that we're in right now, and Kislev. And that is within the tribe of the month, okay? The tribe for the month of Cheshvan, the month that we're in, is Menashe, right? Menashe was the son of Joseph, the child of, of um who was also this who, Joseph, who was the child of Rachel. Tishrei, the month before, was the tribe of Ephraim, who was the other son of Rachel, right? The other son of, um, I'm sorry, of Joseph. We have Ephraim and Menashe, right? And the tribe of Kislev that's going to proceed, that's going to be next month, is this is Binyamin, Benjamin, who's the son, again, of Rachel. So we have the two sons, Menashe and Ephraim, Menashe this month, Ephraim was last month who are both descendants of Rachel. And we have the next month, which again is Benjamin, who is a descendant of Rachel. So we see right away, again, it's not like this month is mar, it's bitter, it's standing on its own. We see right away that there's this deep interconnection where we have Tishrei, which is saturated with high holidays. And we have this connection that's gonna be with the next month of Kislev, which is the month of light, the month of miracles. So again, although it's bitter, we have to really hold on to the fact that within it, it's like it's compacted with all this spiritual energy of, of these two months that are preceding it and following it. Now let's look into historically, why was Mar Cheshvan considered a bitter month? So historically, it says that the split of the 12 tribes actually happened during the month of Cheshvan. That's a historical fact, right? The whole beginning of the story of the split of the 12 tribes with the um, story in the book of Kings with Rechavam and Yeravam, that story actually took place in the month of, sorry, get these like rocket alert attacks and it just, red alerts, it's just, I can't listen, I can't concentrate. Ah, okay, I should, I should keep everyone safe. So what do we see again, that we see that there was, there is this intensity in the month right away. There was a disunity, a split that happened this month. But what do we always know? What is the, the deeper teachings of the Torah always teach us? That although this was a month, again, which was this beginning of this disunity, the split of the tribes, we have to know what is the rectification of the month. The rect rectification of this month is unity is really, is real deep unity. And, you know, we could look at this month and again, we could feel, we could, we could see, feel this energy of Mar Cheshvan and think of it as a month of disunity. But again, the question always is that we have to look at is where does our power lie? The point is not that we feel weak and we feel vulnerable and we feel bitter, right? The point is, is knowing that our power lies in the rectification of that energy, the rectification of the month, which means that the energy of this month is an energy of unity, an energy, and unity always starts within ourselves. Again, 
we're multidimensional beings, right? There's us, there's others, there's there's the world. We're we're multidimensional beings. So the, in order to actually reach unity with others, we have to face ourselves. We have to face the different parts of ourselves, really feel into them, really hold those paradoxes, and then we're be able to bring that unity outward into the world. Now we also see very interesting, another interesting fact is Menashe, as we said, was the, uh, the tribe of the month. Menashe himself was actually a unifying tribe. It says that he united the Jewish, the, the people, the land of Israel, that half of Menashe was divided. Half of Menashe's portion in the land of Israel was in the land of Israel proper. And the other half of his, his allocated um, location, of his allocated um, inheritance in the land was actually in the uh, in the Transjordan Valley, in the Transjordan, which is actually physically out of Israel with Reuven and with God. So right away we see that that the energy of Menashe is this unifying energy. He was bringing that energy of Eretz Yisrael of Kedusha of holiness into outside of the land of Israel, into that place of unholiness. So again, I think it's so powerful when we, when we start learning this of that, that we really see that the energy of this month is unity. And as for me, this is, it's just, it, it, like it touched me so deeply because we see right now what is happening in the world. I feel like the world is unifying together in such a deep way. It's, I, it's, it's like, it brings chills to me. We see the amount, especially now living in Israel, the amount of, of, food and goods being brought to the soldiers. People are calling me all the time. What can we do? How can we help? You know, people that I haven't spoken to in since high school are reaching out to me. I know you live in Israel. Are you okay? Are you safe? The unity that this is bringing us is like no other time. So again, we see that this energy is available for us this month. And we could take this month and again, this Mar Cheshvan, and we can look at it and feel bitter. Bitterness can often lead to weakness, but we can look at it and feel empowered of how can we bring more unity? How can we bring more unity and connection and togetherness to the world? But again, that starts really within ourselves. Now, what do we see? Again, what we said, we know we are at the footsteps of Mashiach. And what gave me also so much comfort is learning that the, this month, it says, in the month of Cheshvan, is the month that the third temple is actually going to be rebuilt. Yes, it says in the Gemara in the temple, that the third temple is going to be rebuilt this month, the month of Cheshvan. The month of Tishrei, again, the month that preceded this month, it says the first temple was inaugurated in Tishrei. The second temple was inaugurated in Kislev in the, in the next month. But in this month, the month of Cheshvan, it says that the third temple is going to be consecrated in the month. And again, this the, we can feel like we are so in the dark and it's the pain is unbearable right now. But when we have to really hold on that this month is downward, there's a download that happened today of this energy of Geula into the world, that the third temple is going to be rebuilt this month. And the unity that's happening, which is like propelling that redemption is just so huge right now in the world. Um, and what do we see again? What we saw from these three months of, of Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, which are all months that the temples were consecrated in, they were all again the children of Rachel. Who is Rachel? Rachel, Rachel, is the embodiment in this world what's called of Malchut. Malchut is the spiritual, um, the, the spiritual power, the soul power within us, which is bringing things down, channeling down spiritual life into the physical world. And what was the temple? The temple is a house for God, where this high spiritual, what's called Orient Sof, God, the infinite light, is drawn down into the physical world through the temple. And that is really, again, this deep interconnection of Rachel to all these three months of the temple and specifically to the month that we're in right now, which is gonna be the rebuilding of the third temple. Now, what do we also see again with the body parts of the month? Again, the Sefer Yitzhira says that every month has a different body part and the body parts of the month of 
Hashvan is called is the veins. Now, what are the veins? The veins are the blood system within ourselves, this connection that brings oxygen to all different parts of our body, right? So again, even on a physical sense, from a physical perspective, this month, again, is this idea of unifying opposites, of this unification within ourselves on a physical level, on a spiritual level, on an emotional level. And we see that again in the zodiac of the month, in the body part of the month. Now, these ideas are amazing and they're so powerful, but I want to get into now is like, how do we actually do this, right? It sounds great, holding the paradox, unifying the different parts of ourselves, holding the contradictions, but I want to now get a little bit more practical of how do we do this? So again, we're going to get a little bit more practical first spiritually, and then we're going to get a little bit more practical um, in terms of an exercise. So, you know, it seems huge. Like, I think, again, this is probably one of the most biggest, because it's a contradiction. Like, I can be sad and I can be happy. Like, contradictory emotions. But this world is, is the essence of this world is we're physical and we're spiritual. We're finite and we have an infinite soul. It's the core of who we are. It's the core of the spiritual makeup of the world, right? Now, where does that power within ourselves to hold opposites come from? So that comes from the part of our soul, of our spiritual soul power called Tiferet. Tiferet, if you put your hand right now on your heart, Tiferet right now is our heart center. It's our heart, it's our trunk, it's the core, like the, you know, the middle chakra. And it's the idea of harmony. It's the idea of bringing together opposites, right? We have within us, we have our soul power of Chesed, of loving kindness, that's one dimensional, right? Um, person is kind, they do good acts of kindness, they're loving. Then we have the other soul power on the other side, which is Gavura. Gavura is discipline, restraint. That's also one dimensional. I'm in that mode of, of discipline, of putting up boundaries. What is the power of Tiferet, the power that we have with right here, within our soul, within our heart center, is the idea to unify opposites, the merging of opposites, the merging of contradictions, the fusion of different parts of ourselves. And what it's so powerful is that on an emotional level, and even on a physical level, it brings healing, because teferit is the same word as rifu'ah. Rifu'ah means healing. And, you know, we see this from even from Chinese medicine or anyone ever did, went to acupuncture or osteopathy. What is the idea of that? Of, of, of well, what is the healing that's happening through those, those methods? Is that they're bringing communication. They're bringing the flow. Acupuncture is the flow of the meridians. Osteopathy is the flow of the cerebral spinal fluids. It's, it's all about communication. Healing is all about communication and, and integration of the whole of who we are. And within ourselves, there's so much deep healing. And I see that with myself. You know, I was saying like, oh, Miriam, like, you know, when this last thing happened, when this thing happened to your daughter two and a half years ago, you were able to get on there and joy breaks all barriers and have a have a on. And again, that was a gift from above. But I see that the growth that I did for myself within the past few years is really learning to be in tune to my feelings, to really sit with my feelings, to the whole, the full gamut of my human experience. And when we do that, when we actually hold space for all our feelings and to the fact at the same time that we are have an infinite soul that is infinite capabilities and that we really can hold on to the fact that in Olmovado, that Hashem is fighting this battle for us and we can hold those two realities, that is really what brings healing to ourselves. And that's why... Teferet is also the same attribute as rachamim, as compassion. And that's really what we need and what others need and what the world needs right now. So much compassion. Compassion is being, what is the definition of compassion? I think the best definition of compassion that I ever heard is when we're being present without judgment. We could actually sit and hear even people out. You know, like I was having, my kids were having an argument today and I was just like, if we could just listen right? Listen, listen to another perspective. 
imagine this, this world, if you could all just hear another perspective without judging it, without saying it's right, it's wrong, it's good, it's bad. And we could just listen, just listen without judgment. And if the more we could start doing that with ourselves of like allowing us to feel our feelings and not judge it, just being like, okay, wow. Like I feel that. I feel sad. I feel upset. I feel darkness. I feel heaviness. I feel a gloom, whatever it is. I feel happy. Amazing. You know, don't be like, why am I happy? You know, it's like, just every, in all of our experiences, but we just sit with them and be present to it without judging it. That is Tiferet. That is healing. That is Rafua. And that allows us, when we start holding this par paradox within ourselves, again, we expand our vessel. And what is this idea of expanding our vessel? Our vessel, our vessel for the light of our soul is our body. So in order to really do this work that I'm speaking about, again, we have to be regulated in our body. Whoever ever learned with me before knows that this is like my big theme um, is that to really understand the value and the, the holiness of our body, that the body, it says spiritually comes from a higher source than the soul. So we cannot do this work. We can't be present here and have faith and have bitachon and at the same time feel our feelings if we're not regulated in our body. So I think right now, one, one message and one thing I really want to share with everyone is because we're, we're all going through, again, this collective trauma to really take time for ourselves every day to be regulated in our body, to breathe, to do whatever it takes, to exercise, whatever it is, meditate, to really be regulated in our body. Because if we're not regulated in our body, if our vessel is not whole, we can't hold these paradoxes. We can't hold the whole of who we are. So that's a huge, very important um part of this work as well. And again, we're we're really being asked of ourselves right now. I think again, the 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 paradox that we're holding are so huge that we're we're asked of ourselves to to hold something that almost could feel not possible within ourselves. But why but what is it? We're holding on to right now Mashiach energy. And that we have a part of our soul what's called the Yechida of our soul, the highest part of our soul, that is the Mashiach, the Geula within ourselves. And we see that in the name for Tiferet. Tiferet is every one of the soul powers are connected to a different divine name of God. And the divine name that's connected to Tiferet is the yud ke vav ke name of God, the Tetragrammaton name of God. And every one of the names of the soul powers are connected to a different one of the, the names. This is connected to the Tetragrammaton, the highest name of God, that's going to be in full revelation when Mashiach comes. So when we actually really have compassion for ourselves and hold space for ourselves and really have compassion for other, for other people's pain that they're going through, you know, at my, um, my, I heard there was like some neighbors upstairs having a little like of a, not an argument, but there was, there was a lot of, there's a lot of tension here, you know? And I was thinking, wow, like, we have to have so much compassion. Everyone is in fight or flight or freeze. There's like everyone's sympathetic nervous systems are on just like overdrive right now. And the compassion that we need to hold for each other right now is so, so, so great. And we have access right now, again, to this Yudke Vyavke name of God, this, this highest tetragram name of God, when we actually allow ourselves to hold that paradox, to really sit with our feelings and hold that paradox. Now, I want to say one thing is that um, in terms of the contradiction that we're holding right now, I don't, I forgot to look up the sources before, but I know it says in the Gemara, there's two different um, quotes about the time period that we're in right now. So I think it was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, woe to the people, like how awesome are the people and how how high of a soul are the people that are living right now in the generation before, Mash before Mashiach that the souls right now are going to experience revelations of miracles that we haven't experienced through the, since the time of the splitting of the Red Sea, the revealed miracles we're about to see. And at the same time, there's another quote in the Gemara that says that the pain and the challenge of living in this generation is going to be so great. So again, we're like, we're holding in this generation where there's just this total paradox of like, we are so unbelievably empowered and that we have the strength to endure this and to witness miracles 
our generation is going to witness the biggest miracles. And at the same time, the Gemara acknowledged that the pain and the difficulty of this generation is going to be like no other generation before. So again, that's like just the, the ultimate paradox that we're holding. But we all really have to hold on so, so, so tight to the fact that Mashiach's coming and that we the war, again, is a war of our mind, a war of our hearts, of where are we going to put our focus? And that's why here in Live Kabbalah, we're, we're so passionate about spreading these teachings because really, again, the world needs, as it says, we said before in the Zohar, that through learning and through teaching and spreading these teachings, we're going to be redeemed from this exile with mercy and with compassion, with love and with compassion. So um, it's, it's, this is really what we have to do. We have to ramp up our acts of goodness and kindness and ramp up doing good deeds. And at the same time, also up our level of learning. So, so, so important right now. Um, so first of all, I want to do a meditation, a quick meditation. Um, so if everyone, and if whoever wants to maybe you can close your camera, if you feel more, more, um, it's easier for you, or if you want to keep your cameras on. I want to do a meditation because I think it's so important. Again, we could have these concepts, but we have to really bring them into our body. Because again, it all comes down to like living it in our body. So let's take a few moments together um, to put our, again, our hands on our heart, the place of Tiferet, place of healing, of refuah, place of compassion, of holding this huge paradox that we're holding right now. And let's breathe in for two and out for four. And in for two. And out for four. Now I wanna give everyone permission to go inside of your body. Really scan your body. And I want you to feel within your body if there's any place that feels some tightness or constriction. And I want you to just notice it. Again, just be present to it, don't judge it. Just notice that place within you. For some people, it may be on your chest. For some people, it may be in your stomach. For some people, it may be in your back, in your shoulders, wherever that place may be. And I want you to really ask yourself, like, what is it saying? What is it trying to communicate to you? And whatever it's telling you, just sit with it. Just be with it. Just notice it. It may be fear. It may be sorrow, pain, anxiety, gloom, whatever you're feeling. Try to put some words to it. Try to get to know it. Now, I want to you to imagine yourself as if you're being enveloped in the cloud of glory. We just came from the holiday of Sukkot, where it says that we're sitting in the sukkah and we're enveloped in the cloud of glory. And it says that after the holiday of Sukkot, we bring the sukkah into our homes and into our hearts. So we bring that cloud of glory into us, into our hearts, into our minds. I want you to really feel that, that cloud of glory enveloping you and holding you.
Now I want you to envision this highest name of God, the Tetragrammaton name of God, the name of God of Tiferet, of healing, of compassion, surrounding you. First picture the Yud. The hay. The vav. And the final hay. Enveloping you. Filling up that whole cloud of glory that's surrounding you. What I want you to do is take that energy from those letters, the yud, the hay, the vav, and the final hay, and I want you to beam light, beam light, that Mashiach light, that Mashiach consciousness into that place of constriction, into that place of tightness, wherever it may be. And I want you to feel Feel it melt away, feel it just go right through you. Just be flooded with Hashem's love and Hashem's light. It's like that light beaming through you. And take a few moments to allow that light to fully fill that whole space. As you hand those feelings, that fear or that anxiety or that pain or that feeling of gloom or darkness right up to Hashem. Are you ready? Open your eyes whenever you feel ready. Whenever anyone's ready, what I really want to do now um, is I want to open up this space because I feel like it's really important. I think we all have to, like so much that we have to process together and really the power of joining together and being there to support each other. So I shared and I, I shared my experience, but everyone's experience really and how they process trauma is so unique and everyone's inner world is so unique. And we're all a collective. So I think we can all gain from really each other sharing their experiences. So if anyone wants to share any thoughts or any feelings, um, I think it's really it's really powerful. And we're all really benefiting each other the more that we share and the more we're vulnerable. And so if anyone feels comfortable, I can share or... I have to say that um, my experience last week when I heard about the news in Israel, it was similar to yours. I just like froze and I was just like, um, 
even my emotions were kind of frozen and I just, I couldn't really move forward with anything. I just felt depressed. And I think what really helped me a lot was to do the meditations that um, your husband had put out on, on trust. Yeah. And also when um, I would look on like WhatsApp and I was like focusing on videos that people were putting out where everyone's just like embracing each other and helping each other. And I just felt like my heart just swelling and getting really huge. And that really helped me to move forward and just be to really believe like, Hashem has a bigger plan in store for us. I mean, it was amazing. It was the beginning of voracious and it was chaos, you know, tohu and bohu, darkness and light. It's like, it's just like, we're just following the Torah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, it feels like, we're, it really feels like we're really living it. Really. Yeah. It's really alive. It just feels like Mashiach is like really here. It's just like, oh my gosh. And um, I read this amazing book over, Shab over Shabbos by Abraham Sutton. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about like, in order to have like a um open up your mind to a higher consciousness, it had to be through the heart, mm. the heart space. And like when you mentioned like affairs and putting your hand on the heart, it just like resonated. It just made so much sense. Mm. I felt like I envisioned this big ball around me and the ball got bigger and bigger because my heart was bigger and I could feel like it connecting with all of us like around the world. It was just like so amazing that we're all very powerful and very had this strong connection. Wow. So beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Wow. Anyone else want to share? Um, <clears throat> I was hoping because we are as a, you know, as a circle group of women, a very powerful channel for divine light. I was, I don't know what your plans are, but I was um, hoping that we could, before we uh, all go our separate ways, take a moment to send blessings yeah. to the um, the people who are held in this darkness in, in Hamas hands, and also to, to send blessings to the IDF so that they can um, do what they need to do to get the job done to 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 bring everybody safe. I don't know. Um, I am I'm a Bas Cohen. Uh, I don't know who else on the call is a Bas Cohen, and I know that a Bas Cohen has the the same um, duty and privilege to be able to bless the Jewish people. So I have been uh, I've been every single day um, th three times chanting the priestly blessings. And um, and just sending the energy to um, to the place to create a, a a bubble of protection to send the archangels to protect those people who are captive, so to mitigate their pain and to try to protect them both wow. physically and emotionally, wow. especially the children. Oof from the the horror that they're experiencing now yeah yeah and if we could yeah, just... i wanted to um i actually wanted to say also a to helen together for this that was a plan of, i wanted to do that also so i think it would be beautiful if we actually said like um a prayer together and then but maybe i think it would be beautiful jane if you want to recite that please share that is so powerful being the um the a daughter of a cohen so please share that um blessing with us and if all of us could really, again, have that, yeah, in our, in our consciousness of sending that. And we said, again, the clouds of glory, just like to envision the soldiers, like really surrounded by the clouds of glory and surrounded by this yud cave up name of God and God's protecting them. And uh, that cloud of glory is protecting them, just like it did in the time that the Jews were in the desert. So, you know, let me, I would like to open up with, um, is it, James, do you want to say up a chapter of Psalms? Do you have a Psalms in front of you? No, I don't, but you can okay. go ahead. I, okay. So I'm going to say that I'll say, I'll say, um, a chapter of Psalms. And then ask Jane, if you want to lead us into the, the other, um, visualization and the, the, um, actual, please say the blessings of the Kohen. Absolutely. Okay. La Menetzeach Mizmorla David. Yanha 
Niranna Bishwatecha, O Bashem Elohim Nidol, Yemale Adonai Kol Meshalotecha, Ata Yadati, Kyoshia Adonai Mishiko, Yaneo Mishmi Kacho, O Big Vrot Yesha Yemino, Ela Varecha, the Ela Basusim, the Nachno Bashem Adonai Elohim Naskir, Hema Karo, the Nafalo, the Nachno Kamno Venitodad, Adonai Hoshia, Hamelech Yanenu Biom Karenu. Now, there's another two that I also heard are very important to say, especially at the time of war. Which ones are these, Miriam? So that was, I just said, um, chapter 20, Kaf. Okay. And now there is, um, I've heard that there's also, I actually wrote it down here. I just want to verify that I'm saying that. I, I found um, an article that was specifically geared towards that, and it had a list of Tehillim, and I created a Word document which uh, because people had been coming to ask me what they should do. And I created a Word document of all of the Tehillims that in both English and in Hebrew that, and I've been sending it to people. So if anybody wants it, I'll be more than happy to share. Beautiful. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so the other one that I've gotten is that it's important to say to um, Sadiq Aleph, which is 91. Um, so I'll say that now. Yoshev Besiter Alyon, Betzel Shaddai Itlonan, Amor Ladonai Marsi Umitsudasi Elohe, Elohe of Tachbo, Kihu Yatsilha, Mi Pach Yakush, Mi Deva Havot, Beverato Yasahlach, Betahat Kanafab Tirse, Tina Besohere Imato, Lo Tira Mi Pacha Laila, Nihet Yaof Yomam, Bedever Baofel Yahalach, Mi Ketav Yashud Sarain. You pull me titra elef, a river vana me necha, a lecha lo yigash, rach be necha tabit, vish shalumat visha im tira, kia tadana marsi alyon, samta unecha, lo tuna elecha raa venega lo yikrava olecha, kima lacha vitsabalach, lishmurcha behol drachacha, al kapangi so uncha, pentigof be evan raglacha, al shachal ve fetan turdof, termos kefir vitanin. Kivi Hashach Abafalteo Askebedo Kiadashimi, Yukri Eni Vanehu, Imo, 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 Anochi Bitsara, Achalteo Vapadeo, Orech Yemim Aspio Vareo Bishuati. And now there's two others that I heard are very important to say now. Okay, the other one is Kuf Kuf Aleph, which is Shirla Malot, Esayenai El Harim, Meayen Yavo Ezri. Ezri me im Adonai osa shamayim va'aret al yitain lamot raglecha al yanum shomrecha. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, Adonai tzilcha al yadi minecha. Yomam ha-shemesh lo yakechra v'yareach balayla. Adonai yishmurcha mikol ra yishmur et nafshecha. Adonai yishmur tzitcha uvoecha me'ata v'ad olam. And now one more, the last capital, I heard is a very good one to say as well. Halia halu el bekatsho, halu brakia uzo, halu begrosav, halu karov gadlo, halu abetakia shofar, halu beneva vikinor, halu betop umachol, halu bemine vogos, halu betiltle shama, halu betiltre chua, kol hanishama, talia halia. Ah, that Hashem should just send protection and this cloud of glory enveloping all of our soldiers. We should just be protected by the angels and all their beings, Gabriel, the angel Michael, the angel of Chesed, of love, and Gabriel, and Uriel. All the angels should just protect them. James, you want to lead us in another prayer? You said, you said sure, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do the priestly blessing. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Wow. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Does anyone else want to share anything or any other thoughts or... Can I share something? Please, sure. Hi. Hi. So um, I'm really relating. 
I'm really relating to the duality you're talking about because I've been spending a lot of time trying to heal my traumatized uh, younger selves, the children within me. I've been doing a lot of work on that. And now uh, with this happening, and you know, there's that part of me that knows ain't on the dough, and I'm giving it to Hashem, and you know, trying to strengthen that part with all my Tehillim and davening, uh, with those things that I hear, uh, the unsafety of these poor children and what's happening to them, and the abuse and the trauma. So now that is now, I feel, affecting my healing where, you know what I'm saying? It's even though I'm trying to be strong and I'm parenting these children and they're Brooke Hashem, you know, they're really healing, but I feel like the trauma of, of what's happening in real time in Israel and what's happening to these poor children are going into my subconscious with this healing I'm trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting, even in my family, you know, we're, thank God, a big family. And I noticed that my daughter who has been through trauma, you know, she was the one that she was burned and she was in the hospital. She's the most affected, like, all my kids, you know, we went to the bomb shelter and we said prayers together and she was just in a panic mode. I saw her, but she was all clammy and she was all white and she was just screaming, you know, and I, and I think it's, listen, it's, it's normal. Like you really have to have compassion, have compassion on yourself. It's so normal. Like, you know, there's like this compounded trauma. I think we have as a collective. And then when we're on an individual level, like we're all facing our own traumas as well. Like it's, it's bringing up, so, that's what I'm saying. It's bringing up so many feelings and don't judge it. Like be there with yeah. it. But I, but I also, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I also Please. think that, I also think that um, all of us who are embodied now, yeah. um, or majority of us who are embodied now, um, Every soul that was part of the 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 Shoah, part of the um, part of the Holocaust, are in body now. So the thing that the thing that triggers us is this experience is triggering us back to our experiences in the Holocaust. So some of it is some of it is things that you're feeling now in the in the existence that is now, and some of it is the recollection of what happened to our souls before, and so this is bringing all that up. I know for me, it, it, that's the reason why I'm so, oh God, I'm crying now. That's the reason why I'm so um, emotionally attached to these children who are held because I have recollection of a past life where I was in the same position during the, the Holocaust. And so we're re-experiencing that again in order to clean out that energy. Yeah, absolutely. And at the same time, we have to remember that Hashem gave this to us and we have that resilience within our soul as well. You know, like we have to always, again, that's the other duality that we're holding to know, like we have the strength and the power to get through this. And we have that resilience within us. We have to know that the same resilience that like, you know, I know because my Bubby was a Holocaust survivor and I always saw that within her, like, it was just like an unbelievable resilience that Hashem gave Holocaust survivors. She suffered so much. And to like, like hold those feelings and absolutely Jane, what you're saying and all those tears, I felt the same thing. I'm like, I'm feeling there was a certain pain that I was feeling that I know was like not even like some uh, trauma that I consciously experienced. I think all of us are feeling that right now. And at the same time, I was holding on to my grandmother's resilience. Like always remember, she always told me, she's like, it could be worse. It could be worse. So yeah, that's the paradox that we're just holding. It's like, it's massive. It is. And we have to cry. Like, it's good to cry. Jane, it's good. Like, let the tears come. Like, don't hold them back. Like, we have to cry. Like, I spent two days just crying. My eyes were like, just red from crying. And we need to, we need to just, we need to cry. We need to feel. It's important. Very, very, very important. It's important for ourselves and important for the healing of the entire world, for all of humanity. 
Yeah. Very, very relatable question. Thank you so much for sharing that and for being so vulnerable. Thank you. What's your name? I'm sorry, that shared the, these. Me? Yeah, what's your name? Oh, Miriam. Um, oh, Miriam. I spoke to you once on the phone. We did connect a, a little bit. Yes, yes. A while ago. Florida, yes. <laughs> this summer. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being on. Yes. Yes, exactly. Good memories. <laughs> Anyone else want to share anything? Anyone? Okay. Can I share something, Miriam? Please, please do. Yes. Okay. I had just listened this past week to your husband's teaching um, where he was just talking about everything that's going on in Israel. And um, I'm just finding it interesting because it, he, he had really ended the video with it is, it is time to choose a side and you cannot be silent. And um, I, I just find that interesting that that's happening in a month where we have this duality too. Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're not trying to play both sides politically correct, which you're hearing of course all over in the media, but it is time to pick a side. So I don't know, maybe that's in a whole nother paradox in and of itself. Uh, yeah, I think every paradox that we could possibly exist in the world is just coming out. Honestly, it's so true. <laughs> it's like everything is just like, everything is coming to the surface. You know, it says before Mashiach, one of the prophecies says that that the spirit of impurity is going to be literally come out of the world. It's going to be like vomited out. So it's it's becoming so in our face right now, like this is evil. What is evil? What is good? What is right? What is wrong? It's like, it's like, you know, people could be used to be people were just like, oh, quasi, oh, whatever, you know, um, there's good though, and mixed in. It's like, no, like, this is evil, this is good, this is holy, this is, and or this is not. It's like, it's just, there's no mediocrity anymore. And that's really part of the coming of Mashiach. It's coming out to be exposed. It's coming out to be, in order to be eradicated. Like if something's hiding under the surface, it can't be eradicated, right? It has to like come out to be eradicated. So, and we're seeing this right before our eyes. Big time. Yeah. Wow. So thank you so much, everyone, for being on. And we should just really, like, I'm so looking forward to it in Cheshwa, and we are going to be joining together in another circle here in the Beis HaMikdash. We're going to be giving each other a hug, and we're going to be like, we knew this was happening, and we were, it's going to, I'm like so excited for it, really, because it's like, it's, it's really happening, and we should just, but it should just be with like mercy and with compassion and with really just Hashem should just send revealed miracles and it, it really it's just that's it like and everyone should be safe and the soldiers should be protected and um and again like looking forward to next month connecting again a big circle in Jerusalem oh, man. Yeah. hi Neely hi hi Rhonda hey, everyone and another thing I just wanted to mention that what I, I was speaking before about how um, we're starting next week, a intro to Kabbalah, we're calling it Living Redemption Program. And again, like I said, it's so important this time to up our learning, especially the learning of, of the mystical dimension, the Panimia Satora, because that is what's going to redeem us. And that is going to allow us to break through the veils, the superficial veils of like the klipa in this world and really to see the world for what it is. So we're starting this program next Sunday. Um, it's a, a whole year long program with a curriculum going really level by level by level um, to go very deep into these concepts and not only to learn them, but really how to live them. That's what Live Kabbalah is. How do we actually live them? So whoever's interested, and if anyone needs a scholarship, please reach out. Money should never be an obstacle for learning. So I think what we're gonna be doing, God willing, on Wednesdays, we're gonna have a um, question answer session if anyone has any questions about the program god willing i think this wednesday night so we'll send out an email about that and again next year we should just be reunited in jerusalem i think someone actually put on the chat some questions um i see here where's the show chat here we go someone had asked about i think a copy of that prayer yeah um yeah i'm gonna um Miriam, do you want me to send you that Word document or and then you can just forward it to whoever you want? It's actually an article that I found online, which had links to all of the 
the Tehillim that needed to be said. And what I did is I created a Word document with a Tehillim actually embedded in the Word document so that you don't have to search for it. It's just right there. And uh, Ron, Rhonda, I, um, it, um, I cut and paste your uh, email address. I'll try to send it to you. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to send it to Miriam and then she can distribute it to the entire circle if whoever needs it. But I, I think it's, you know, I've been sending it to people who've been asking me what they can do other than donate money. And, um, and I think it's, uh, beautiful. it's important that we do that. Absolutely. So yeah, send it to me. And if anyone's interested, it's just shoot me an email and I will, um, I'll send it back to you. Okay. Sounds All right, good. everyone. Chodesh Tov, month of miracles. Bye-bye. Thank you for being on. Right.